Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all good? I hope so. Y'all, let's talk about Carlos real quick. And everything that I'm saying in this video is in my opinion. The Copyright Act of 1976, Section 107, gives me fair use to these excerpts that I'll be using in my commentary as my backup to my research. And these are my thoughts, my opinions, and my perspective. Okay, I want to share my thoughts real quick on a caption that Carlos made under the HuffPost article that he shared on IG. So the caption reads, quote, Thank you at HuffPost for the mention of my creation, Love and Marriage Huntsville. By far one of the best seasons ever. Second half of the season is back in November. Congrats to my cast and crew. I love y'all. End quote. So what I want to speak on mostly is the my in the first sentence when he says, Thank you at HuffPost for the mention of my creation. And let me tell you why that stood out to me. First off, it was the energy that I felt that was attached to the word my. The energy was so heavy and it had so much attitude with it. You know how folks make the stank face? Sort of like Stormy. You know how Stormy did when she said harassing communications. I feel like that's how he was looking when he said the word my. Carlos, in my opinion, is very weak because he loves to throw subliminals. He speaks mostly in subliminals. And I don't like that. It's like, that's the ish I don't like. But for a while now, and I've said this several times, I've been feeling like since that live podcast, Carlos has been trying hard to erase me up from Love and Marriage Huntsville. And I think for a lot of people, that gives very much snake vibes. Because usually when you call somebody a snake, it's because they first seem to be very kind and sincere. But once they bit you, started shedding their skin, you found out that they were very sneaky, underhanded, deceitful, and cold. And then in an interview that Carlos did with Matt Warner, I think that's his last name, back in 2019, he asked him, quote, Do you think Melody has the most potential to be a breakout star and a TV career outside of this show? End quote. Carlos responded, I think all the ladies do, honestly. Melody? Definitely. When I met Melody, I saw a star, and that was the reason I kept in touch with them. They, Martell, and Melody drove from Huntsville to Atlanta. At the time, I was living in Atlanta, and the moment I met Melody, I said, Oh my God, she's a star. I just knew it. At the time, I really wanted to find the best outlet for them. I do give them all the credit because they could have easily gone to another production company. They could have been impatient and said, No, we want this now. But they trusted me. And I think a lot of that had to do with my honesty with them. But I don't think Melody Ho has the opportunity to achieve anything she sets her mind to. She is a renaissance woman. She's resilient. She's super savvy when it comes to business. There's a lot of irons in the fire when it comes to Melody Ho that I think the world has yet to see. And I'm happy I'm on this journey with her. End quote. And we also remember when he said that he will hold Mel's hand through the whole process. A week before we were scheduled to shoot the pilot, I received a phone call from Melody Holt. Melody drops the bomb that Martell is cheating on her. We prayed about it. And I said to Melody, shoot the pilot. Be your authentic self. If the show gets picked up, then we will figure out how to make sure that we are representing the authenticity of you and Martell. And I will hold your hand throughout this entire process. <sighs> Things have really changed. <laughs> like they, yeah. Because now it's like all of you are punishing her for being her authentic self. Hmm. He also did a live the other day, and I can't remember if it was with Heavenly or what, but in that live, he said that he put Huntsville on the map. And what? And when he said it, it came off like he had already been scoping out Huntsville or something. And that just made me be like, wow, okay. This man right here is fighting hard to erase this woman from Love and Marriage Huntsville. And it was quite interesting for me because in that same article, he, that, um, interviewer asked him, quote, Carlos, what first got you excited about Love and Marriage Huntsville? End quote. And Carlos responded, I met Melody Martell approximately five years ago. They pitched a concept about what they do in Huntsville. 
in regards to real estate, developing homes in Huntsville, Alabama, I jumped at the chance just out of curiosity of the city, end quote. So for him to say that he jumped at the chance just out of curiosity of the city, then let me know right there that he wasn't too familiar with it. And in my personal opinion, Melody actually put Carlos back on the map. Her life, her story put him back on the map. He's eating good because of her pain, because of everything that she went through. And it's so messed up that the two men who told her that they would protect her and be there for her turned out to be the enemy all along. And when it comes to him saying that Love and Marriage Huntsville is his creation and that he's... I am the creator and the executive producer of Love and Marriage Huntsville. The story of how this show happened is the fact that I had a meeting with Martel and Melody Holt who pitched me a show idea based on them flipping houses. Carlos, he had a different idea. He was like, mm, y'all a nice looking couple. Do you guys have some friends? I said, look, I think the best way to sell a show with the two of you starring in it is if we do an ensemble cast. They agreed. Listening to that now, it gives me Den of Thieves. I don't know if you all have watched that movie before, but it stars O'Shea Jackson, 50 Cent, Gerard, Gerard Butler, and Pablo Schreiber. So listening to what he said then versus what's happening now, that's what makes me think of Den of Thieves, pretending to be one thing, playing people against each other, only to look around and figure out that you're really the mastermind behind the whole heist. Even the Scots are being played and they're just too slow to see it because when it comes to family empire, that concept seems very familiar to what Love and Marriage Huntsville was advertised to be because I saw that commercial during one of the episodes of Greenleaf season three because I was like, oh, this looks interesting. I think I'm gonna check this out. But I think where the switch up happened when that phone call that Mel made to him a week before taping the pilot, I think that switched up everything. I said, I'm not doing the show. I'm not. It was very devastating to me because I thought that infidelity was something we'd gone through, had gotten over, done over, and we're good. We prayed about it. And I said to Melody, shoot the pilot. Be your authentic self. If the show gets picked up, then we will figure out how to make sure that we are representing the authenticity of you and Martel. And I feel like that's when it went from Rocket City Revival to Love and Marriage Huntsville. And that's why he can say that he is the creator and executive producer of Love and Marriage Huntsville because what was pitched is not what was created. And in that article, he was asked, quote, your executive producer on Love and Marriage Huntsville. For casual TV fans who may not know what all their job entails, what's the range of stuff involved with being an EP on a show like this? End quote. Carlos responded, quote, sure. So me and my company pitched the show to the Oprah Winfrey Network. And by me being the owner of the company, by default, I'm also the executive producer of the show. Then I hire other producers, whether it's an executive producer, a supervising producer, etc., to organize what we are going to have seen for the show, end quote. So what he said about owning the production company makes him the EP by default is actually true, according to masterclass.com. They stated, quote, if you own a production company, and are involved in a film project, you are often considered the executive producer. The CEO of a production company is often the executive producer of the film or TV show it produces, whereas pitching a show doesn't necessarily make you the show's creator because it is seen as a presentation of a core idea to a potential buyer, who in this case would be King Rain, and a show's creator is the person who develops a huge portion of the show's format, concept, as well as the pilot script, end quote. And y'all remember when it came to the pilot, Carlos said. So Angela Dugan and myself, along with our editor, Nick, we collectively put together a sizzle reel 
to pitch to networks. And at the live podcast, he talked about all the hard work he had put in, all the work he put in developing the show, building his staff, flying back and forth, yada, yada, yada. So in my opinion, he knew exactly what he was doing. It's like he was gathering evidence or this exhibit A, B, C, this exhibit 1A, 1B, just in case somebody wanted to challenge him in regards to him being the creator and executive producer, almost like in a legal way, if you get what I'm saying. He knew he had two people in front of him who were not familiar with the TV world. And he saw green in more ways than one, in my opinion. So it's different, you know, like when it comes to Mariah Huck and Married to Medicine, she actually pitched her show directly to the networks. She cut out the middleman. She shopped the show around and she was picked up by TLC, but she chose to go with Bravo because she felt like it was a better fit. And she spoke about this during her interview with Carlos. And to this day in her description on Bravo.com, it states, quote, from her early days as a television host and news producer at a local Tennessee news station, Mariah knew that to effectively tell a story, it needs to be sold to the right audience. As a creator and executive producer behind Married to Medicine, the proof is certainly in the pudding, end quote. For me, when it comes to Love and Marriage Huntsville, I will always view Melody as the creator of this show because it has been centered around her life since season one, episode one. This was her dream. This is her dream. She believed it and she never let go of it. In the beginning, even Kimmy gave her props. Once the network saw the pilot, I was told that Miss Winfrey saw the tape and that we were officially picked up for a season. Mama, I made it. Unbelievable. I was, Unbelievable. <laughs> I was, Unbelievable. <laughs> I was actually walking through the airport screaming, right. oh my God, we're going to be on TV on Oprah Winfrey and Network? That's surreal. Who right. thinks that? Who wakes up in the morning? Well, maybe Mel. It's really kind of sad how all of them know who to thank. All of them know the reason why they're in the positions that they're in. It's not because of Carlos. Because... You you can't get to Carlos without first star with Melody. So it's really sad to see how all of them came in so excited and happy for each other. And now there's been so much back and forth and nastiness and hating and lies. And it's been so much stuff ugh, that they not even, they nothing to each other. They just co-workers. It's like so much damage has been done. It's just crazy. It's like sad. It's sad. It's crazy. It really didn't have to be this way, but it is what it is, y'all. I don't know. But look, these are my thoughts, my opinions, and my perspective on this situation. And again, the Copyright Act of 1976, Section 107, gives me fair use to these excerpts that I have used that I have used in my commentary as my research to back me up. Y'all please get down in the comments. Let's talk about this, okay? Thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, and thank you for commenting. And I'll talk to y'all later.